Good morning. Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew, and we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 25, the first of two sessions where we're going to be talking about the Last Supper, the Passover um, event that Jesus shared with his disciples. We know from the other Gospels much more about the preparation. Also in John's Gospel, we're not just given the meal at all. We're just given the red ink, the words that Jesus said on that night, and the words are many. Uh, chapters 13 through 17, are all the things that Jesus said to them on that night. Really appreciate John writing at the end of the first century for filling in the blanks. If we didn't have John, we'd be left with so many questions, and we still have plenty. But John names names and fills in the blanks of what Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the synoptists, have left out. Let's read our passage. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, this is interesting, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he was reclining at table with the 12 disciples and they were eating. As they were eating, he said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, surely not I, Lord. And he answered them and said, he who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him, but woe to the man through whom the Son of Man is to be betrayed. It would be good for the man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. And he said to him, You have said it yourself. Well, this is part of the Last Supper. Um, the eating of the Passover meal. It's interesting that the disciples ask Jesus, where do you want to eat this meal? This meal would have been uh, traditionally um, eaten with family. And Jesus is eating this meal with his spiritual family, with these 12 men that he has chosen to be special, to be his special ambassadors, to be his special messengers to the world. And um, so they're eating this meal together. In Luke's gospel, Jesus says, I have eagerly longed to eat this meal with you. And John's gospel lets us know why, because he has so much to say to them that evening. There would have been four items, four courses to the meal, uh, the Passover meal as prescribed, um, you know, by God um, for the first Passover when they were still slaves in Egypt. There would have been the lamb itself, the Passover lamb. So there's the meat course, the bitter herbs, which would have been bitter herbs. And it would have been mixed with a, like a mash, a puree of like nuts and fruit, which would have made a dip or something that you could have used with the meat. There would have been the unleavened bread, the flat bread, and there would have been the wine. And each one would have been taken. The meat with the bitter herbs and then the bread and then the wine. And when each item was brought out, there would have been a blessing. So this portion of the meal is the first part where they have had the meat and the dip, the bitter herbs. And <clears throat> Jesus quotes the prophet Zechariah um, and says he is about to be betrayed. Um, and um, and, and uh, they all are startled uh, by this when he says, one of you is going to betray me. Um, and, and they all ask, is it I, is it I, is it I? And he says, just as it is, as it is written, um, um, excuse me, let me read the verse again, just as it is written of him. Um, uh, and he seems to be quoting a variety or referring to a variety of Old Testament prophecies, but particularly one from the, from the prophet Zechariah. And he says, woe to, to the man through whom the Son of Man is to be betrayed. It would be good of him uh, if he had not been born. 
uh, it's interesting, this whole thing about the betrayal, it was written of beforehand. It was written of in the prophets that this was going to happen. This is part of God's eternal plan. And yet, when he betrayed me, he exercised free will. This in itself is something that's interesting for us to take note of, necessary for us to take note of. Free will and God's immutability, God's eternal plan, they coexist. They are simultaneous with each other and one does not cancel the other out. That seems to be completely counterintuitive. If God is in control and his will is completely and perfectly and to the last detail being worked out, how can we? it be said that we exercise free will? And yet we do. God's sovereignty and our free will exist simultaneously in the same way that Jesus is simultaneously fully human and fully divine. And God is simultaneously singular and plural. Just because these truths are too large for my brain or all of our collective brains together to process doesn't change the fact of it. And it's all communicated here in this in this event and even in this single and even in this single verse. And then there is verse 25 uh, and what Jesus had said in verse 23, the person who dipped his hand in the bitter herbs and the dip and the sop with me, he's the one. We don't understand in our culture the, the role that hospitality played in, that, in their culture and continues to play. In, in the Middle East, in the Levant, um, it just does. And, and to share table hospitality with a man that you have already betrayed would have been more shocking to them than um, Mary wiping Je taking down her hair publicly and wiping Jesus' feet with it. It was horrific. It was it was just something that would have that would have mortified uh, first century listeners, first century readers. And Judas says, "Is it I?" And Jesus says, "You have spoken it. You have said it." I don't know why the other apostles didn't catch that. Maybe it was said in the mayhem of the moment when Jesus said, "I'm about to be betrayed," but they don't. And um, and. Um, so he's, he is identified as the betrayer before Jesus gets to the two items of the Passover meal, which will be preserved for us as Christians uh, until he comes again. We'll talk about that next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.